be seated. Thank you so much for singing a wonderful song service. We're going to have our special music at this time, and that's a brief.
thank you for the song service that we've been able to enjoy. We thank you for uh, the shows that we're able to pray for and rejoice with. We appreciate all that you've done there uh, in Greenland. We ask that you continue to bless and have your hand upon them. Uh, we thank you for a time of offering. We, we thank you for special music and the opportunity we have to just be encouraged uh, as, we, as we share a song that's burdened our heart. And now we come to this time of preaching, God, and we need your help. Lord, as we look to the pages of your blessed book, we pray, Father, that you please give us exactly what we need. I pray that you help me to be a blessing to these dear folks and give me clarity of thought and clarity, clarity of speech, for I cannot, uh, and I don't, wouldn't even want to try to uh, be a blessing to, to, to preach and uh, make any sort of sense without your help, without your aid, and without your strength. And so I pray, Father, the best I know how, please, please help me today to be a blessing to these dear folks. Help our hearts to be soft here in a way. Help us to find the application that we need to get a little closer to you. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, folks, you may be seated. Thank you so much for standing. Uh, this evening, of course, we continue to consider the turmoil uh, that had rose up there among the Jews uh, that dwelt there within Jerusalem as they were working on that wall trying to rebuild their, their home city. Many of the more wealthy and influential Jews uh, were taking advantage of those uh, Jews of their own family, their own household, uh, that were less fortunate. Of course, this caused a, a, a great distress. It caused great cries, as we saw last week, uh, of those who were disadvantaged. And, uh, and those cries filled the city. And uh, Nehemiah, he was making what seemed to be some great progress there with, re with the reconstruction efforts uh, on the wall, but then he is forced to stop uh, and deal with the situation so that the work could, could, could keep on and could continue on. Now look, how we, we need to understand, I think this is important for us to understand, the enemy is still in the business of hindering the work of God. Amen? Uh, he still likes to slow things up. He still likes to stop things up. And he will do whatever it takes uh, in order to hinder God's work and God's play, even creating internal problems. We ought to always be careful. Hey, when, when, when you get to fellowship with somebody and the, and the words come out of their mouth, did you hear, you might want to be very careful uh, with what you allow that conversation to go to next. Amen? Uh, some, of the, some of the greatest struggles, some of the greatest difficulties that are found in the church houses today uh, is the, the, the hindrances that come from internal struggles. Amen? And I'm thankful for the sweet spirit our church has had overwhelmingly throughout the time that we've been here. Uh, I'm thankful for it. But we should always be vigilant. Always be careful. Always be cautious to make sure that we're caring for our own and making sure that we're not that, that we're not being injurious to our own, uh, so that we are avoiding any sort of internal problems. Uh, we want to be effective in our neighborhoods. I mean, we want to be effective in our communities. There's some spiritual walls that have been torn down uh, in this country. We want to do our part, be able to rebuild those those spiritual walls, uh, living for the Lord and getting close to Him and soul winning. And so many spiritual walls that need to be re rebuilt. Listen, we can't afford, we can't afford a hindrance, amen? We can't afford uh, to be slowed down, to be slowed up, amen? We can't afford to be caught off guard, especially by uh, some inviting amens. We need to make sure that we're cautious with that. But as we continue to move through this passage tonight, we come to, uh, excuse me, the portion that reveals uh, how Nehemiah dealt with or handled this specific disruption, this hindrance that took place as they were rebuilding this wall. I'm confident tonight that, that, that he would uh, that he would rather the situation had not come up. Amen. Uh, I'm sure that he did, didn't enjoy having to deal with this. Uh, but it did. It came up. Uh, and and it, it was his responsibility to deal with it and to handle it. And uh, it's evident. It's clear, I believe, that Nehemiah uh, confronted this thing. He confronted this injustice that was occurring. Amen. And uh, he realized that it, it, it would it would it would do any good to just avoid the situation. Amen. There's some. I think there's sometimes that we can allow some things to just work themselves out and just bring those things to the Lord in prayer. I understand that, but there's some things uh, that that just they need to be confronted if they are ever to be. Result. I think it would be safe to say that the majority of us would just rather avoid confrontation. Amen. I know that there's some out there, and probably not in our church, hopefully not in our church. I'm sure there's some out there that just thrive on confrontation. Amen. They love confrontation. They enjoy conflict. But I'd say most of us, if not all of us, uh, in our church, we, we, we do 
like we just enjoy uh, peace and harmony. I mean, I, I certainly do not enjoy conflict. I don't like confrontation. Uh, but there's times when we must deal with situations that arise. Amen. We can't. Uh, we can't always just allow things to work themselves out. In some cases, that works. Uh, but in, in many cases, uh, we have to take a stand uh, for what's right. We have, and, and in those cases where we take a stand, of course, those stands will always come with conflict. They will always come with confrontation. Uh, it, it's not sinful or wrong to confront iniquity and injustice. Amen? If we do so with the right attitude, with the right spirit, with the right desired outcome, it, it is a right thing, it's a good thing for us to confront sin and to confront iniquity and to in, uh, confront injustice. In fact, we have several uh, biblical examples. We won't go through all of them tonight, but we have several biblical examples where confrontation was necessary. It was carried out to a desired, Christ-like, God-glorifying result. Uh, as, as you study the life of Jesus, you'll find that he confronted many. And he confronted the Pharisees. He confronted the Sadducees. Uh, he confront, confronted those that were filled with unbelief. Uh, we saw that uh, uh, he, he confronted the money changers in the temple, uh, and those are just to name a few of the Savior. Uh, what the Savior confronted, we see the Apostle Paul, he confronted Peter uh, in regard to the discrimination against the Gentiles. In Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to, to the face, because he was to be blamed. Uh, for before that uh, certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when uh, they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them, which were of the circumcision. He uh, was he discriminated against the Gentiles in fear of what the Jews would think if they if he was uh, if he was fellowshipping with those same Gentiles. Amen. And so, with the Lord's help this evening, I'll just take a, a few moments uh, to consider some of the steps that are revealed here in Nehemiah's confrontation. As I preach on this thought for just a little bit, boldness to confront sin. Boldness. To confront sin. Uh, number one, if you're taking notes, you want to follow along as a, with an outline uh, this evening. We find in verse number six, we see the reaction of Nehemiah. We consider and we look at this truth of the reaction of Nehemiah. Now, this one verse, verse number six, I think reveals an awful lot about Nehemiah's reaction uh, to the actions of these greedy Jews. Uh, we see uh, in that first part of verse uh, number six, we see his anger. The Bible says, and I was very angry. Now, this was not a minor aggravation. This wasn't just a, a subtle frustration, amen. Uh, he was literally angry with them because of their actions. He was angry with how they were being unjust uh, to those of their own family, amen, uh, taking advantage of those who were less fortunate uh, than they were. In fact, he was very angry about that. And, and just as with confrontation, confrontation is if, if we're confronting sin, iniquity, or injustice, if we do so with the right spirit, with the right desire, outcome, uh, with the right motives, amen, I don't believe it's sinful, and just as confrontation in that, in that uh, uh, setting is not sinful, also I don't believe it's sinful to become angry with sin, uh, as long as we don't let our anger consume us and turn us to a place where we go from seeking uh, vengeance rather than justice, amen, our Lord was filled with a righteous anger with the money changers. Amen. The Bible tells us he drove them out of the temple with a whip that he made up. And uh, he wasn't, he wasn't going to have that. He was not going to allow that. And as he saw that, he confronted it uh, in, in, in a, in a, in a, in a, and demonstrated certainly an anger at sin. Uh, I'm concerned that many today have become docile uh, in regard to the sin and iniquity of our day. Now, I think there's some folks that have carried anger to an extreme and all they preach is hatred and anger and meanness, uh, uh, and, and they end up and, and they end up spewing out into a hatred towards the actual sinner themselves. Uh, but listen, I'm, I'm also concerned that there's many folks that, that have gotten scared of that uh, of that of that extreme on that one side, and they've just withdrawn to be so this docile in regard to sin and iniquity of our day uh, that that the, the, they're not standing against. That which is wrong and unjust. Amen? Listen, it ought to bother us when we consider the sin that's happening around us. Amen? We should never allow ourselves to get, get to a place where we can just be comfort, comfortable in the presence of wickedness. Amen? We, we ought, listen, our faith is it's being attacked on every hand. Uh, our children are under enormous pressures uh, to abandon their faith. Uh, and, and to conform to the world's uh, thinking, the liberal agenda uh, is taking more of our religious liberty each year that goes by, and they're doing it subtly and slowly till one day we're going to look and say, whoa, where did that liberty go? And listen, that ought to affect us, uh, and it ought to move us to action, amen? Listen, we don't have to allow our anger to become sin. I believe there is a time where anger can become sin. Amen? And listen, we don't have to allow our anger to become sin, but there's nothing wrong with sin bothering us. Amen? Listen, the difference is spirit-led hatred for sin versus fleshly-led hatred for the sinner. Amen? We need to make sure that we're cautious 
obviously be careful to, uh, to avoid the one uh, and allow the Holy Spirit of God to lead us through those opportunities to stand and confront sin and injustice, and we can do so with the right attitude. Look, God's people ought to desire justice, they ought to desire reconciliation. Amen. They ought to desire uh, sin being dealt with. They ought to desire folks getting born again. They ought to desire folks that are living in sin that are Christians to be reconciled back to the family of God. That is, uh, that is what God's people ought to desire. Trusting God to take care. Amen. We need to, we need to have a uh, uh, God's people ought to be trusting God to take care of the vengeance part. Amen. We should be desiring justice and reconciliation. God will take care of the vengeance. In Romans chapter 12, verse 19, we're reminded dearly, beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. Hey, let's worry about it. Hey, let's stand against sin. That's all right. That's a good thing. We need to confront sin and injustice. Uh, but let's do so with a desire for justice and reconciliation, letting God take care of the vengeance side. Amen. He'll, he'll worry about all that. Amen. He'll worry about that. So we see, uh, we see that uh, as we consider his reaction, we see his reaction of anger. We also see his assessment in this reaction. Uh, looking at verse number 6, the Bible says, And I was very angry when I heard their cry in these words. So Nehemiah, uh, he had not become angry without a cause. Amen. He wasn't just angry at the world. He was just angry for no reason. Uh, he had heard the cries of the people, and that had caused uh, that anger. He had uh, listened as they had told of all the injustices that they were dealing with, uh, and, and, and how uh, at the hands of their own countrymen, they were being greatly taken advantage of. And, and, and listen, we understand that Nehemiah had the right uh, to be angry uh, in this situation. Uh, he had observed the situation. Uh, he had come to the conclusion that the people had not been treated fairly. And he was determined uh, that it was necessary to confront the wrongdoing. Amen. Nehemiah acted, I believe, with integrity. He acted with wisdom. Uh, he had, listen, he had truth on his side. Amen. Uh, he, had the, he had the word of God on his side. He knew that God was not pleased with how they had been taken advantage of. He knew that God was not pleased with the sin, the iniquity, the injustices. Amen. And he had considered the facts and he had chose to act on that which he had considered. Listen, we need that same wisdom. We need that same integrity in our day. Listen, every battle is not going to be worth fighting. In some cases, we can pray and we can see the Lord work out. Uh, and and, and there's, a, there's many times that I've been able to see God just work out some things as I, as I made that situation in prayer. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful we don't have to address every situation. But I believe we'll know. Amen. I believe we'll know uh, when it's those situations where we must act and where we must, uh, where we must uh, uh, take a stand uh, against uh, iniquity and be bold in the face uh, of iniquity. Amen. Every battle is not worth fighting for, but if if we have a, a clear mandate in Scripture, listen, we must be willing to stand our ground and we must be willing to confront uh, iniquity and injustice. Amen? And so we see the reaction of Nehemiah in verse number 6, but verses 7 through 11, we see the rebuke of Nehemiah. Uh, we, we, find that, that, that we find his rebuke, that he rebukes those uh, who had taken advantage of their brethren, and he addresses several issues. Uh, that were wrong. He addresses their usury, or he rebukes them for their usury. Look at verses 7 and verse number 10. The Bible says, Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact usury, every one of his brother. And I said a great assembly against them. Verse 10 says, I likewise, and my brethren, and my servants, might exact them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this Usury. So uh, I, I'd like to say, first of all, uh, that, that I don't believe Nehemiah acted in haste. I think this is something we this is something we can overlook. We see that word anger, and we say, Hallelujah! There's a spot that gives us the right to be angry. And listen, I think if you if you're approaching this passage of scripture with that attitude, you're really going to go back to the drawing board on that. Amen. You got to work out some things. Uh, you ought not to get excited about getting angry. Amen. It ought not to be something that excites you uh, and stirs you up and motivates you today. Amen. Uh, but we see here that Nehemiah he didn't act in haste. And the Bible says he consulted with himself. Now you think about that for just a He took a moment to consider the accusation. He, consider, he took a moment to consider how he was to respond. Uh, listen, it's always better to, to take a moment to reflect before we speak. Uh, how many times, because some, you know, sometimes, sometimes what you are experiencing is anger. You may be able to justify in your mind as spirit-led anger, but after you think 
about it for a minute, you realize you're just being petty, uh, or you're in the flesh, uh, and you need to correct that and move on or pray or whatever. You might have a whole different, uh, whole different attitude on just taking a little bit of time to consult with yourself and spend some time praying. Amen. Uh, but after he had done that, after he had uh, taken that time, he rebuked them for, the, for their usury. After he had consulted with himself, he realized that taking a stand in this particular situation was necessary, uh, and that it was necessary to confront sin and injustice. Uh, he rebuked them for their usury. He rebuked them for taking advantage of the poor by charging unnecessary interest on the loans that they had. Now, that might have been uh, acceptable to strangers and foreigners, uh, but it wasn't acceptable among their own. Amen? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 19, the Bible says, Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Usury or money, usury of victuals, uh, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Amen? Uh, you're not, it's, we, we, we know that in, uh, in we look at the, the New Testament principle there in that area. I don't loan to a brother or sister in Christ uh, uh, with, with usury. And I also don't loan uh, without, in the back of my mind, uh, being okay uh, with if they if they fail to pay me, uh, I already have it in the back of my mind uh, that I am not going to go after them in the law. Amen? Uh, because I, as, as a brother, we're not supposed to do that. Now, these folks were, they were enacting usury upon their own brothers. They were putting unnecessary interest rates uh, on their brothers, and that was that was making it all the more difficult uh, to be able to pay that with, pay back that which they uh, had loaned. Look, this involved more than just interest. Amen. It also involved the collateral, uh, and if the loan was 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 not paid off, it was their it would, it would cost their land, it would cost their property, it would be seized as way of payment. Look, we have an obligation to do good toward all men. Amen. Especially those of the household of faith. We ought to always consider that. Listen, we ought to uh, we we ought we, have, we are obligated to love our neighbor, and that goes for anybody that we're coming in contact with. We ought to love them and care for them. But we have a challenge specifically and especially. For those in the household of faith, amen, for those who are brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we ought to take care of them. We ought to have a desire to love them and to encourage them. Look, the Lord is never pleased when we benefit from the misfortune or the difficulty of others, amen, especially your brethren in Christ. And so we see not only did he rebuke them for their usury, but he also corrected them uh, in, in uh, response or, or talked to them about their uh, integrity, verse number 8, or their lack of integrity. Uh, the Bible says in verse number 8, And I said unto them, We after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen, and will, will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. So the Jews there in Jerusalem, they had paid sums of money to the Persians so that they could redeem their brother and the ones that could not pay for themselves to get out uh, of the bondage that they were in. And yet they were enslaving others within their own city. So on the surface, they appeared to be genuinely concerned for the well-being of the people, but deep down they were corrupt and sinful, and they were doing it with the wrong motives, and they were doing it looking to just continue to enhance their own personal gain. Look, the world around us is always looking, they're looking for something that's real. They're looking for something that's genuine. Amen? Now listen, they really are. Uh, they, they, they expect us, and, and they do so rightfully, to practice what we preach. If you call yourself a Christian, uh, if you if you make known that you're a Christian, uh, dear brother, dear sister in Christ, you ought to behave as a Christian. Amen. In every business dealing, in every transaction that we do, listen, we ought to practice what we preach. Listen, we preach and we teach the Great Commission. But we talk of loving others as God does. And listen, we, we, we display a sense of concern and commitment for our communities. But deep down, do we really care? Because if deep down we really care, that will be seen on the outside eventually. Amen? Listen, are you concerned enough about the lost? Are you concerned about those uh, who are enslaved to sin? Uh, to be able to welcome them within our congregation, regardless of, of what or who they are? Listen, are, are we willing to give sacrificially in order to reach the lost and to be able to help those who are oppressed uh, in the wickedness of sin? Listen, many are, 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 are happy uh, to contribute to programs or to activities uh, that help maybe their cause. But listen, there's a lot of folks out there that have little interest otherwise. Look, do we have, do we have do, uh, is, is, is God's agenda our agenda? Amen. Or do, we own, or, or, or do we approach Christianity with our own agenda in the cloak of Christianity, really, is what that ends up being. So he, he, he talks about their integrity or their lack thereof. Amen. God's people ought to have integrity. Amen. Integrity is acting right when nobody else is looking. Amen. We ought to have an integrity uh, about us. Folks, that, uh, when your preacher's not around, when the deacons aren't around, when your other brothers and sisters in Christ aren't around, 
around them. You ought to, you ought to live the same way that you'd act and behave uh, and, and treat, the same, treat the people the same way that you treat them in Sunday school, amen? Uh, that's the right, right way to do it. Now, if you treat bad people poorly in Sunday school, uh, then, then we'll have to fix that. We'll correct that another way, amen? Uh, but listen, you ought, to be, you ought to be willing to treat those uh, folks when nobody's looking uh, rightly and, and, and in a Christian way. And he also rebuked them and talked about their hypocrisy in verse number 9. He says, also I said, it is not good that you... Uh, uh, good that ye do, ought ye not, uh, ought ye not to in walk in fear, in the fear of our God, because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. And so these had, they had heard the truth, uh, they knew the God of heaven, amen, they knew what was expected uh, of those who followed the God of heaven, and they were living in hypocrisy. Amen. This, and this was troubling. This bothered Nehemiah. This was troubling to Nehemiah because he had he had boldly stood in faith against the opposition of Samballat and Tobiah. Amen. And the others that were that were amongst those that were that were opposing the work there in Jerusalem. And, and no doubt, uh, Tobiah and Samballat and those that were uh, around were sitting back watching. And if they were able to get an understanding, if they were able to catch wind of what was going on uh, in the midst of these Jews, no doubt they were sitting back laughing uh, at the hypocrisy that was going on. Look, the hypocrisy of the greedy Jews had become a reproach on God, God's plan, God's program. Amen? Listen, the world around us is aware of the lives we live. Amen? Brother and sister in Christ, God, the people are watching you. Now, you might not like that. I understand that. Uh, it's not enjoyable, but people are watching you. Amen. Your co workers are watching you. The store clerk is watching you. Amen. I don't know how many times it's been longer that we've been back here in town. Hall, how many times uh, I'm driving down the road and uh, just uh, just uh, the other day, I'm driving down the road and Tegan and Olivia, they were supposed to be here this morning, by the way. That, that goofy girls, where are they at? But they hollered, Pastor Steve! And they saw, I didn't even recognize them, didn't even hardly know them until they hollered at me. Listen, you don't know who's watching you. Amen. Some of these bus kids that you've ministered to over the years, some of you bus workers and, and, and bus uh, program workers, different different uh, uh, classes you, you, you've worked in uh, over the years. These kids grow, they grow up. I had a big old, old beefy young man came up to me in an auto zone not too long ago, and he walked up and he said, your name is, your name is Brother Steve Amen. And I was like, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and I, I was waiting to see what was going on. He was like, you, you used to pick me up on the bus at Lighthouse Baptist Church. And he told me his name. I'm like, man, the last time I saw that kid, he was like this. And, and now he's running around. Listen, we don't understand. We don't realize how many folks are watching us. And the longer you're a Christian, the longer you're living for the Lord, the more people are watching. The more people are looking. They're seeing if you're the real deal. They're seeing uh, if you're a hypocrite. So many times we see folks say, I'd be a Christian if it weren't uh, for those Christians. And I understand that we're all hypocrites to some degree. I understand that we all are battling. It's always a constant fleshly battle of double standards. I understand that. Uh, but more often than not, uh, we, we ought to be making sure that our testimony is pure and right and, 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 and praising uh, to the Lord that we serve. Amen. Uh, so that those who are looking and trying to find a reason uh, why we're a hypocrite, why they ought not to be a Christian, they can't find it in us. Amen? Listen, the world around us, they know how we live. They watch uh, and listen, they, 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 they know what we preach. They know what we stand by. They, they know the lives that we live. And listen, we have an obligation to the Lord. Amen? We have an obligation to the, our brothers and sisters in Christ to walk in a way that pleases God. Amen? Uh, we're, we're no longer our own. We've been bought with a price. Amen? And we belong to our Savior and we ought to live uh, as, as, uh, as He pleases. Amen? And so we see, not only did he rebuke them about their hypocrisy, uh, but he also rebuked them, giving them their responsibility. Verse number 11 says, Restore, I pray you to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, uh, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and the corn, the wine, the oil that ye exact of them. So Nehemiah offered only one option. Amen? There was only one option. You do right. Amen? Do the right thing. Uh, do the right thing. He urged them to restore uh, that which had been taken from the people. Not just, not just pay from here on out, do a better job. Uh, he talked about restoring that which had been taken. Amen. Restitution. I think that's something we miss out in our day. Sometimes we, we say, hey, look, if we just, uh, you know, we just
to stop, uh, stop uh, the wickedness and, and move on. In some cases, that's okay. But sometimes we need to go back and fix some things. Amen? Uh, he, he said, listen, you need to go back and fix some things. Uh, you need to restore that which has been you, you've taken from the people. Uh, he reminded them of their responsibility to the Lord. He reminded them of their responsibility of those uh, of like faith. Uh, and this was, this was simply what was expected of God's people. Listen, can I say tonight the same is true for each and every one of us. Amen. There isn't multiple options. Amen. Listen, there, there is only one option that's going to please the Lord. Uh, you must do right. Amen. You must do right. You must do the right thing. You must live for Him. That's, that's the option. Amen. There's not multiple. It's not multiple choice. Amen. In, in the Word of God, we find that it's right to do. Then we ought to be practicing that. Amen. That ought to be our testimony. We must do the right thing. We must live for Him. But most of us have grown in the Lord enough to know what our responsibilities are. We know a lot of times, a lot of times I don't have to do a lot of correcting. Uh, you already know. You already know when you're outside the boundaries of God's Word. Amen. You already know what you're not supposed to be doing, what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. You know what your responsibilities are. Uh, and, and even if even newer believers, I think a lot of times they have the Spirit of God to guide them and they know more about what they're not supposed to be doing or what they're supposed to be doing than we give them credit for. Amen. Uh, listen, we should never expect or, or be satisfied with anything less than God's simple plan of just doing right. Amen. We ought to be all right with that. Listen, I don't know about you, but I, I, I get tired of, of professing Christians that live uh, that live like the world. Amen. It's, it's a, it, it is tiresome uh, to us. It's frustrating. It is. It burdens me to see those who attend church uh, when they want to and they stay away at other times. And, uh, they just have no no regard for uh, for for real Christianity, real growth in the Lord. Many Christians today they are only interested in what they can receive, and that's a sad thing. Many folks go to church today, uh, and, and a lot of times you say, "Well, listen, uh, why don't you come to church?" Well, I don't I don't need church. Well, you know what? Maybe you don't. You know, maybe. But other people need you, amen? Maybe somebody else needs a blessing from you. Listen, I, 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 oftentimes I, I try to go to church with the idea of trying to be a blessing to somebody else, amen? That ought to be our mentality. If you always had that mentality, somebody's always going to need a blessing, you're never going to have an excuse to stay home. If you think about that, amen? Because listen, you might be on a mountaintop experience, and maybe you could get away with one Sunday without fellowship with some brothers and sisters in Christ, and maybe you'd be just fine until the next week. Maybe you'd just be, I'm saying maybe. Amen? Maybe you can just be fine. But you know what? Somebody else might be looking for a blessing. And, and God might have you be the one that's, that's going to provide that encouragement uh, that that other brother or sister in Christ needed that day. But when you choose to, uh, to sit back, sit out, and sit the sideline, uh, and, and in that particular case, being selfish because you don't necessarily need something that day, listen, we, we are missing out on what God has called us to do. There's a lot of folks out there that are only interested in their they they approach Christianity with what will I get out of this relationship? And that's a sad testimony. Now listen, I think all of us probably are guilty to some degree or to in, in some times of that uh, being our testimony. But let us let us always always be aware and let us always be self-examining. Am I serving you, God, for the benefits that I receive, or am I serving you, God, for your worth, or for you being worthy of my service, or am I serving you, Lord, because you deserve it? Amen. Because you've already been blessed me enough. If God gave me not a single more blessings. Uh, in, in this life, uh, he would he would he would still be worth me serving him for all eternity. Amen. Uh, if he removed everything from me, uh, if he removed every physical blessing, every uh, every dollar, every cent that I own, if he removed that from me, if he caused me, if I was diagnosed tomorrow with a stage four cancer, uh, uh, an aggressive and very painfully suffering uh, form of cancer that was going to cause all sorts of pain on my way out uh, to eternity, I would still have reason to praise him, to serve him, and to live for him. Now that's extreme, I understand, but it is truth nonetheless, amen? Uh, listen, he, he, deserved, he, he deserves our faithfulness, amen? And it's not about what we get out of the situation or out of the relationship, it's about what, listen, what are we going to give as a way of thanksgiving to what God has done uh, for us. So we see the reaction of Nehemiah, we see the rebuke of Nehemiah, and then lastly we see in verses 12 and 13, we see the response of the people. Now, in these verses we find that uh, uh, how these people responded to Nehemiah's rebuke. Notice, notice this, the first thought here, in the first part, verse number 12, notice the agreement uh, that we see. The Bible says, then, they, then it said they, we will restore them, and will require nothing of them, so will we do as thou sayest. Uh, it, it doesn't get much simpler than that. Amen. I kind of wish every conflict really would have been res resolved like that, brother Eric. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hey, sure, preacher. That sounds like a great idea. Let's go ahead and get this thing fixed right now. Amen. Uh, what a blessing. Listen, they heard the words of Nehemiah. They were, they were uh, confronted with 
of their iniquity, they were confronted with their shortcomings, and they just agreed to do what he had requested, and they agreed to do right. Oh, what a blessing that is. Can I tell you, though, dear friend, although that might not be uh, what always happens in the area of conflict and boldness in, in, uh, in the face of iniquity, that is what God expects, that is what the Lord expects uh, as a response from us as well. Amen. When the Holy Spirit of God uh, eats our lunch, if you will, about a particular sin or iniquity or injustice that we've been involved in, amen, when the Holy Spirit of God uh, continues to mount pressure upon us about that which we've been engaged in that's not glorifying to God, hey, when He gets our attention about that thing, listen, it's not time for us to try to, uh, to, try to negotiate with God, amen. It's not time for us to see uh, if we can just get partial, uh, partial forgiveness or partial reconciliation in the matter, amen. We have to, hey, God, yes. Yes, you're right. You're getting a hold of my heart about this thing. Uh, you have convicted my heart about this thing. You've pointed out very clearly where I've been wrong. Lord, I'm sorry I'm getting right. And I'll be just that simple every time. Amen. He simply, uh, he simply wants us to agree to follow him and to live according to his commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible says, And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. Man, God's plan is simpler. We make it complicated, I think, sometimes, but God's plan for us really is simple. Listen, God just wants us to agree with all that he has given us in his word, amen, and just practice that which we learn. In scripture. We see not only their uh, agreement, we also see their accountability. That second part of verse number 12 says, Then I called the priests and took an oath of them and, and that they should do according to this promise. So there would, there would certainly be accountability to the priests, but the greatest accountability really was to God. Amen. They had sworn an oath before the Lord uh, that, that they would live according to His word. And what a sobering thought. And what a sobering thought here. Look, we, we all. We all ought to have a, a compelling desire to live for God. Amen? Uh, that ought to burden us. That ought to motivate us. We ought to be motivated to, to live for the Lord because we've trusted Him in salvation, because of what He's done for us uh, in salvation. Amen? And understanding what salvation is, amen, purchasing uh, us and, 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 and uh, uh, purchasing that redemption on that cross of Calvary. Look, when we receive Christ as Savior, we made a commitment. We, we, we ought to be making a commitment. In our lives, I'd be mean, committed to serve Him. Amen. Listen, when, when you join, uh, when you join up with a, with the local church, uh, you make a commitment to support its program. Amen. Listen, God is watching the lives that we live, and we're accountable to Him. Amen. We make commitments, and God knows those commitments we make, and, and we ought to follow through. Amen. With the Lord's enabling, we ought to follow through. God is watching the lives that we live, and we are accountable to Him. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse ten says, "For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ." That every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, I'm thankful sin has been dealt with on the cross of Calvary. I'm thankful that my sin, uh, not in part, but, but, but the whole, amen, uh, has been has been uh, nailed to a cross, amen. I'm thankful that, that uh, the, the truth is my sin has been dealt with for all eternity. My sin will never be brought back, uh, brought back uh, in question. But my behavior as a Christian... Uh, will be brought back in, it will be brought, uh, and those works that I did or did not do uh, will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen? It won't be a judgment for sin. But, dear friend, you, your lives will be judged. If you're saved today, your lives will be judged of the Savior. Amen? You will stand before the Savior someday face to face uh, as your works for Him are tried by fire. Amen? To see that which holds up uh, or that which burns up uh, as, as, as wood, hay, and stubble. Amen? And I don't know about you. I certainly don't want that which I have, uh, my, my life, my behavior, the way I've lived for the Lord, I don't want all that to vanish up and to burn up. You know, as, 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 as with uh, wood, hay, and stubble, and have absolutely nothing to offer the Savior uh, as a crown, uh, as, as a way of saying thank you uh, in, in glory. Amen. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my, rewards is with, my reward is with me, uh, to give every man according to his work shall be. Amen. And so let us remember that, that uh, we, will, we will stand accountable. Uh, before God. I mean, they were standing accountable uh, before the priest, but they were certainly going to stand accountable before God. Thirdly, here we see in verse the first 13, we see the admonition there. He says, and Also I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth uh, not this promise, even thus, uh, even thus be 
be he's shaken out and emptied. So Nehemiah, he offered, a, I think, a stirring reminder of the oath that they had just taken, that they had just made. Uh, he, he warned that God uh, would judge those who failed to keep that commitment, uh, to keep that promise. He, he reminded them of the seriousness uh, of what they had just done, the seriousness uh, of the commitment they had just made. Now listen, we need to be reminded that this, this isn't a game. Amen? Christianity isn't a game. Living for the Lord isn't, uh, isn't a game. Amen? It's, a, it's not a recreation room. It is a battlefield, brother. Amen? Now listen, it, it isn't something that we just do when we feel like it. Uh, listen, as God's people, we have an obligation to live for Him every day. Right. Amen? We, need to, we have an obligation to live for Him moment by moment. Every uh, every detail of our life ought to be uh, in, uh, lived out in, in, in with a desire to please Him. Now listen, I understand that sounds like a tall order, but dear friend, that's just our reasonable service. Amen? That our obligation ought to be ought, ought to be ought not to be grievous, amen? That obligation to the Lord ought not to be grievous as we Consider the cost that he paid for our freedom. He said, man, this sounds like, sounds like an awful lot of work to be a Christian. It sounds like so much difficulty. This just sounds horrible to have to do all these things to live for the Lord. Dear friend, it, it, ought, to, it ought to come as a joy to us. Hey, the closer you grow to the Lord, the, the more you, the better understanding you get of what he did for you on that cross of Calvary, the easier it ought to be to live for him knowing what he did for you and knowing that all of that was done without, without uh, an expectation uh, that we would have to pay any of it back. Now listen, he expects us to live a certain way for his glory and for his honor. Uh, but all that we receive in Christ was done by grace. That is an unmerited favor. We didn't work for it. We didn't earn it. We didn't pay for it. God gave us salvation. You think about those folks out there that believe in a work salvation. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, other religions all across this world today, they, they, are, they are striving day in and day out to hopefully, maybe, possibly, obviously we know according to the Bible, not at all, uh, but they are hoping by their teachings and by their faith and by their religions that they practice that, that maybe something in the afterlife can be good by with, with their striving, with their effort. You think about it, you think about how miserable that is to strive day in and day out for a lifetime, for a possibility. Amen? You think about that for just a minute. And then we, we get to rejoice in the truth of the Bible that says that's all cared for, it's all done in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We, we don't have a hope so, maybe so. Amen? The Bible says we can know so. Ain't that a wonderful blessing tonight? And listen, that ought, that ought to, we ought to never grieve serving God. We ought to be excited. Uh, we ought to be excited about that. And so we see, I got some more thoughts here, we'll go ahead and skip those we're running out of time here. But we see that last part of verse 13, last thing we see the, the alteration here. The Bible says, and all the congregation said, Amen, and praise the Lord, and listen to these verses here, and the people did according to this promise. Amen. Look, the rebuke of Nehemiah uh, and the, 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 uh, uh, the, the conviction that the Lord brought, the, the confrontation here, the confronting of sin uh, to these folks, it changed the heart of the people. Their heart was changed, and so therefore their behavior was changed. It altered the way they lived. The people did according to that promise. They kept their word. Amen. Listen, that is that is, repentance is not the physical change. We see that word repentance all the time. Listen, repentance and salvation is important, but it's not what folks think. A lot of times folks think repentance or they associate it with the works. Uh, with, with, with the works, uh, because, it, because it's so closely tied together. When somebody truly repents of their sin, whether it be repenting unto salvation or, or, or just in our regular day-to-day uh, -day lives, the Holy Spirit of God rebukes us about a sin and we come to that place of repentance about a particular area of our life. Listen, it's a heart change that's taking place. I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Lord, please be my Savior. I'm not just saying it to get this guy off my porch. Uh, amen. I'm not just saying it because my buddy uh, came up here and is saying it with me at the same time. I'm saying it because I've come under conviction of my sin. Uh, I realize that I'm a sinner. I realize I'm on the way to hell. And I want a right relationship with God. I know that way is only through Jesus Christ and I am going to turn from my sin internally. I am trusting Christ as my Savior. I no longer uh, want to be... Uh, condemned my sin. I want Jesus as my Savior. That's our repentance unto salvation. Listen, when that is genuinely made, behavior changes. Amen? Now, it might take, obviously, longer with different people. It's going to be a little different with different people. Obviously, we understand that. But changes happen. Amen? In the life of a born-again believer, if you're already saved and the Holy Spirit of God convicts you about a behavior, an area of your life, uh, and, you, and in your heart, 
you say, I'm going to, okay, I'm done with this, Lord. I'm sorry about this, Lord. I've sinned against you, God. Please forgive me. I want a right relationship with you, Lord. When that repentance is taking, take, uh, made, when that heart change takes place, soon after, the behavior will follow. That's what we see here uh, in the lives of, of, of these Jews. They made a promise. They made a commitment. You can tell that they had made a decision to follow the Lord, and then the Bible testifies that they did just that. There's a lot of folks that say, listen, I want to make a decision to come to an old-fashioned altar. They pray a prayer, whether it's praying for salvation or whether it's somebody who professes to be a Christian, they pray that they get rid of these things out of their life, and then they grab all those things back up at the altar that they just laid down, they bring them back home, and they engage in them before they even leave the parking lot of the church. Amen. Listen, when God works on your heart, you've got, you got to let that, you got to let God uh, change your life. Amen. You've got to let, you got, you got to let the Lord uh, continue to work uh, in your heart. Amen. Uh, what we, we, we desperately, we desperately need a, 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 a spiritual and social alteration in our day. Amen. Oh, we need to see God's people. Listen, I, I hate seeing uh, God's people continuing to move farther and farther and farther and farther left as our day gets darker. It is a sad thing. Listen, if anything, we ought to be moving further to the right. Amen. We ought, to be find, we, ought, we ought to be finding those areas in our life that ought not to be there, removing them and getting even closer and even closer to the Lord, even more separated from the world. I see churches all across this land today uh, that are that are shifting their practices, their their worship practices, their church uh, service practices to, uh, to, to gain some more people in attendance. Uh, and they're just loosening up uh, the way they live. They're loosening up their behaviors. Uh, and, and I tell you, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sad, sad thing in this day. We ought to be running to the Savior. Amen. And we ought to be running to God. And so many folks are, are trying to find out what all can we get away with. How much can we abuse this thing of grace? How much can, how far can uh, we go? I tell you, we, we, we desperately need a, uh, a social alteration, a spiritual alteration in our day. We need those uh, who will sense their need, will repent of their sin, will turn uh, from their wicked ways and just serve God. Listen, that's, that's revival. Amen? Listen, abandoning that sin and returning to God, that's what revival is going to be. Revival is not going to be just a bunch of people saying, hey, that sounds great. Amen. There's going to be some action that takes place. There's going to be some folks that are laying down their sin and their wickedness and the ways of the world, their world, their way of thinking, their, their, their flesh-pleasing way of thinking. They're going to be setting those things aside, laying those things aside and getting back to a place where they just want uh, that, that old-time way with God. Amen. That's revival. Listen, this is, that is the only hope for our generation. It's the only hope for our next generation. Uh, and it's going to begin, it has to begin in the house of God. Amen. We can't expect the world to, to make those social alterations. Amen. God's people need to make them first. Amen. Uh, the world out there need to see a change in you. They need to see Christ in you. Amen. And uh, they need to see it very clearly, very plainly. They need to see a difference between you and the way the world uh, functions, the way the world lives. Uh, in these closing verses, uh, in, 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 in closing here, think about uh, these verses. Uh, they, they've been a, a a very clear challenge to our walk with God. Amen. Listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, guilty of taking advantage of others financially, but there certainly are areas in my life that are not totally surrendered to the Lord. That God is always working in different areas, and constantly trying to grow me, and trying to, to to work out different areas in my life. Amen. Uh, listen, there, there, there are there are always areas that are going to need attention. Amen. I, I, I hope that the Lord never. Never uh, passes over working in my heart about some other area in my life that can get a little closer to me. Amen. Listen, I, I really I want to I want to see uh, God move in our midst. Amen? But I'm aware that that, that that will never happen unless we we uh, get uh, get earnest and sincere with God. Amen. Just get genuine with Him. How about your spiritual life tonight? Uh, amen. How about your spiritual life tonight? As we stand and we stand and uh, get ready to close here with an uh, invitation. How about your spiritual life? I ask you first, are you saved tonight? I, I, hope, I hope that the majority, if not all of us, have made the decision to accept Jesus as our personal Savior. Uh, hopefully you've made that decision tonight that you realize you're a sinner. You realize you're separated from God for all eternity because of the sin that you were born with in relation to Adam. And uh, I hope that you understand that Jesus died for you. 
uh, that you have to make a definite decision to accept Him as Savior. It's not something that you don't you don't just become a Christian because your uh, because your family is Christian. You're not a Christian because uh, you're you're not saved or uh, redeemed today because you paid a certain amount of money to a church or because you're a relatively good or moral person or because you've been water baptized. Amen. You're saved today only if and only. You have made a decision to accept Jesus as Savior, and you are putting your faith in Him to have washed your sins away uh, and given you eternal life. Amen. If you're not saved, God, I ask you to come to an old-fashioned altar, trust Jesus to be your personal Savior. Those that are saved, if you're saved today, how are you living spiritually today? How's the Lord? How's the Lord? Uh, is the Lord worked in your heart uh, this evening about some areas that need attention? Amen. Listen, I, I, I'm confident that we all have some areas of growth. If we just be honest, how's the Lord working in your heart today? With eyes closed, head bowed.